We got to get together. Creative people, we got to get together. Songwriters, movie directors, book authors, creative people. We are the ones, if you go back and study the history, we are the ones that planted the seeds that became the movements and the moments. But so many creative people are stepping back going, I no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. I like this freedom of not having to think. No, we need you. We need you. Unplugged because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. And we've got to turn it into a tool that will get this generation growing beyond this COVID-19. This is Arrow Unplugged. Man, it's one of those days. It's one of those days. I walk into the studio and it's like it's like the slightest thing. Have you ever had one of those days where it's like just the, just the most, the most itty bitty thing that takes place and, and, and it feels like a fire starter, like you're you're a volcano ready to just. It's one of those days, man. How do you break free of that? How do you put yourself in a position of, hey, man, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Oh, I think it's because I keep looking at those damn COVID-19 numbers. Here we are. What is it? 18, 19 months after after we were first initially put into lockdown and those COVID-19 numbers are on the rise again. Are you shocked? Are you shocked? The nation went all out and ripped off their masks, man. Those not vaccinated were to keep those masks on. It became a game of trust or faith. The high hopes that the cheating would play the game. They would stay within the system and not kill their neighbor. I mean, look at the stock market in the United States, infected by the increase of sickness caused by those who didn't get the shot. I'm not going to put a blame on you. I got my shots. I'm fine. It doesn't mean I'm protected. Uncertainty. We're right back into that game again because people refuse to play by the rules and I'm not trying to guilt trip you I'm just I'm just giving you giving you the moment man I'm not challenging anybody winning is a choice and so is life and death a student at my lecture last night he claims that he had COVID-19 and openly said to everybody everybody present I, I, I had COVID-19 I was bored with it I, I it wasn't what they said was was going to happen and, and I was expecting something worse, but man, I got bored. I got bored. So man, you know, just, just get it and just, just prepare yourself for boredom. To which I replied, are you grateful that you didn't become seriously ill? He replied, this is all a hoax. Whew. My conversation with him was done, finished, and get this heckler completely away from me. We are separated because of the vaccines we are already in a place and a space to stay away from the dysfunctional family being an introvert in 2021 is nothing compared to the individualism put into play in a society that believes its voice is what all people should be living by the thought of being together is a disease that's a pretty heavy subject the thought of being together is a disease Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. Been doing this stuff since July of 1994. So I've, I've had a couple of days of practice. <laughs> Living in the presence of now. Stream thinking. Being here. And we talk about things that are happening right now. So what does that have to do with the future? What we learn today is a tool. Not for yesterday, because it's already played out. But it is a tool for how we're going to grow tomorrow. That's how we live. We become stronger by being present today. This is the daily mess. Now, I'm not going to say that we are the generation that is mentally unstable when it comes to building. But we are witnessing the wobbling of walls. It's become a place of unrest, not just here in the States, but around the world. It's written about in local papers and all over social media. And the more we read about the faults of other people, the more we recognize our personal weaknesses. Then we accept it without fixing it. That would cost money. And where does that tree limb grow? Because I want to pick some money off that tree. People are gathering to protest. And the reason why is because that $7.25 an hour for minimum wage, it's not enough, man. I want 15 bucks an hour. 
We've become a divided nation. Instead of a single voice helping us to lead the way, we're being crushed by a million individual thinkers. One does not change a nation. One does not do it. You got to collaborate. That's what brings the division into one single line. Which won't happen in a cancel culture society where ghosting your best friend is acceptable. All because in the moment we chose not to deal with it. The generation of mentally unstable builders. Guilty by way of fault. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Do you ever sit there and wonder, and you may not, in 2025, 2030, oh, let's go a little bit further, 2039, someone's going to come across a piece of your life, be it in a box, maybe you're into social media in the way of putting your voice out there. Somebody is going to find something that you put on this planet, your, 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 your imprint, your footprint. And, and they're going to put judgment on it. They're going to say, well, why didn't they do anything about it when they had every opportunity to do something about it? Do, do you ever think about that? That, that what, what you do right now does affect the next seven generations. And it's not a guilt trip. I'm just having a conversation with you. I'm just, we're, we're just talking. That, that in this decision to be present right now, this, this comfort that we feel or this discomfort, depending on what your situation is. But somebody in the future is going to look back at you because it fell on their lap and they're going to say, oh, it could be different. They, they say that my, my real father, who I, I never met, my real father, and what I mean by I never met, in, I have no memories of him. My mom and dad divorced when I was three years old. They said that he was a raging alcoholic and he was also addicted to gambling. Is my reason for writing his addiction? Is my reason for doing radio endlessly and, and staying committed to a project that brings me nothing except for you, which is very valuable, is that part of his addiction? What we do today will affect the next seven generations. So how do we end this? How, how do you end the cycle when you're part of the circle? How do we grow beyond when we are the creators of what is here right now. I, I understand why people are protesting. The cost of living in this country, I, I read an article the other day, you can have two full-time jobs being paid minimum wage and still not have enough money to pay for rent. I get it. I get it. But what I don't get is how a small business can afford $15 an hour when people aren't spending their money inside that store. Who's going out of business here? You or them. And when they do go out of business, what happens? You're back to ground zero again. It's a place of choices. And if winning is to take place, we've got to play a better game of trying to figure out what is going to happen up here while we're making decisions right here. Are they good, better, greater, or worse decisions? You ultimately have the choice. You are in a position of being the president and CEO of Me Incorporated. How is your personal business? What is the shape of your next decision? And is it wise to make it? Or will somebody just walk by and take it? Sometimes I feel like that I found more peace in the COVID-19 lockdown than I am in this place right now where people are just doing whatever they want. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.